Podcat Monsters is back again with another silly Pokemon topic. I'm Jeff Grizz Ulrich, and with me as always is the sunny day to my solar beam, Dustin Cunningham. How are you tonight, Dustin? I'm so great. When I read that earlier, it made me laugh really hard. I was looking <laughs> through the show notes and I saw that. I was like, that's really funny. So that's what, it'll make you feel good, right? Yeah, we we, I like we that em- one. you you empower me. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because uh, where I was at work today, it was roughly like 82 to 85 degrees down there. And I was going home and I'm like, man, I'm going to go for a jog. I'm going to put my tank top on, my shorts. And I come right up over the hill for my houses and it's just dark, gloomy, like rain clouds, like windy. Looks like it's going to rain any minute. I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So uh, tonight, while we hope and pray for any new Pokemon announcements, we are going to have a fun conversation about like ethics and morality in Pokemon. Uh, There are some Pokemon that are so powerful and so important to the very nature of the world of Pokemon that it is truthfully irresponsible and immoral to catch those Pokemon. But on the other hand, there are some Pokemon that are so dangerous that it is truthfully irresponsible and immoral not to catch them. So we're discussing those Pokemon today. But first, the news. Uh, We're going to start off with some Pokemon Go news. The second half of the Pokemon Go Luminous Legends X event has begun. Pancham is now avail- available in one-star raids. Shiny Galarian Ponyta is now in the game. And until the event ends on May 17th, you also get three times catch XP. Have you taken advantage of any of this stuff from the Luminous Legends X yet? No, I, I've popped in a couple times. I haven't really had a whole well, we were talking about this in like the pre-show before we went live just about free time in general i haven't had a whole lot of free time um and it's been kind of a crazy busy week in general for me so i have not really gone out usually i'll play pokemon go and i walk my dog and i'll catch stuff then i haven't really got to take advantage of it um i am really excited to catch a pancham though because i do love that evolutionary line i think it's a really cool pokemon um and then also the fact that Galarian Ponyta is has Galarian Ponyta been in the game for a while or is that yeah so new? Galarian Ponyta has been in the game but shiny Galarian okay. Ponyta was not and so okay. now you can get the shiny Galarian Ponyta and therefore this is Galarian where, Rapidash this is where I just learned that I can also catch a Galarian Ponyta so now I'm excited so, to even catch a Galarian I don't Ponyta. know that you can catch game. Galarian Ponyta you can hatch Galarian Ponyta oh okay it's so like all, all the Alolan Pokemon at first when they were introduced you could only get them in uh eggs okay it's the same sort of deal although I'm sure Riley would correct <laughs> uh looks like John uh John confirms hatch chat, only <laughs> yeah. so uh this event is going to be followed by the Luminous Legends Y event which features an increase in dark Pokemon spawns and adds Eveltal uh to the game Part 1 runs from May 18th to May 25th. In 7k eggs, you can get Alolan Rattata, Meowth, Grimer. You can also get Sneasel, Puccina, Stunky, and Purloin. And then uh, Pancham is going to be added to the Strange Eggs alongside Quillfish, Larvitar, Absol, Scorapi, Sandile, Scraggy, Ponyard, Vullaby, and Dano. Dino? Dano. Yeah, I go... Never understood this one. (laughs) Dano? And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Pronounce them correctly, and I, 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 I no idea how to do that one. <laughs> My joke was for Riley. If <laughs> a Dino ate your baby. Very good. Uh, but yeah, so you can also use a charged TM to help a shadow Pokemon forget frustration during part one of the event. And then in part two, which runs from May 25th to May 31st, uh, it'll focus on Eevee and fairy type Pokemon, thus making this the best event in pokemon go history more mm. eevee content <laughs> i've heard it both ways <laughs> uh but yeah so you also have an increase in fairy types and it'll finally add sylveon to the game uh, that is cool i like and, that part. and i think the really cool thing that they've done for how to get sylveon is eevee can evolve into sylveon by earning hearts with it as your buddy which you know makes perfect okay. sense yeah i I have a few a few things to talk about with this here. One, I really need friends to do remote raids with so I can actually catch some of these legendaries because like I don't have Xerneas either. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of the legends because of legendary Pokemon. I just don't have like a group to play with. So if you want to play Pokemon Go with me at any point and do remote raids, let me know. And two, I'm still mad that we don't have another evolution from like this newest gen. I really thought we were gonna get an evolution. I mean, I'm just. 
how long has it been now? It's been like four well, generations. Sylveon was, <laughs> Sylveon was uh, so, X and Y, right? Was it really only so. X and Y? That wasn't that long ago then. Boy, it feels like yeah. forever. Well, it was also almost. I mean, I guess it is almost a decade. That was almost <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> See, that wasn't that long ago. I judge time based on how long, like, like I used to work at GameStop. So a lot of my post-college time is in reference to, you know, which company I was working for. So, like, I worked for GameStop. It's like, oh, that wasn't that long ago. That's, like like you said, that's seven years ago that I stopped working for GameStop. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, also on May 15th is Pokemon Go's monthly community day, which this time around is featuring Swablu. Uh, you join the event from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time, and if you evolve a Swablu into an Altaria, it will have the move Moonblast. I'm I'm a little bummed because I actually really wanted to participate in this event, but I have a friend who's here for their birthday this week and we're doing a kayaking thing all day that day. That's actually why we're recording this today. Right. So I won't be able to participate in this event because I really do want a shiny uh, Altaria. I think it'd be really cool. I, so I'm, I'm sad, but maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't, depends on if I'm able to get in, but I'd I'll be able to. It's also this. one of those ones that, like, you, it takes a lot of Swablu to evolve to an Altaria. 400. 400 candy. So, and I, I feel if like you're I not already close to 400, you're going to have to commit a good chunk of your day to catch an Altaria, uh, to catch I'm gonna pull up. I'm going to pull up Pokemon Go, anyways, to see because I feel like I was going for getting that. And surprisingly, in my area, there's a lot of Swablus, which is kind of weird. So, I, I don't know, but. It's cool. I'm jealous that I can't do it because I would love to get a shiny Altaria. The next event in Pokemon Masters EX is called Splash and Punch and is a solo event. It offers a story focused on Nessa and B, two gym leaders from Sword and Shield, and it begins May 13th. Uh, We're going to continue to talk about Pokemon Masters EX news until there's better news to talk about. (laughs) Uh, Swablu update. I have a shiny Altaria, so I'm good. Oh, okay, so you're not going to participate. <laughs> yeah, and I do have 124 Swablu candies already, but I do have a shiny Altaria, so I'm good with missing it. Whew. Whew, dodged a bullet um, there. Yeah. Pokemon Masters uh, EX, we, we talked about this off stream, I think, at one point, but we talked about maybe trying these games out just to see if any of them catch us, because I think I downloaded this game and played the I mean, intro, I, I played through it. the tutorial, and I was like, okay, well... You know this. This you know what it reminded me of actual Pokemon, and I was like, well, if I'm gonna play actual Pokemon, I'll play actual yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Um, cool for everybody that really cares about Pokemon Masters EX. So, but that's the news from that. Uh, also, in Pokemon TCG news, which of course we are very much into, Target has temporarily suspended the sale of Pokemon cards and other trading cards in store in response to reports of violent confrontations related to the collectibles, whose value has soared in the past year. The new policy will go into effect Friday, but customers began seeing signs in stores this week. Yeah, and since this uh, this as well, I'm pretty sure Walmart is doing the same thing. Like, I'm pretty sure Walmart is just buying them. It, I'm of two minds of this. It One, it really sucks, but... The other part of me is I've never been able to go to Target to get Pokemon cards anyways, recently. Like, every time I go, they're completely wiped out. So it sucks so, for whoever's been getting to the cards before you got to the Target. That's who it sucks yeah, for. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sucks for them, but like, like also at the same time, like, good. Because those are the people that, like, probably buy out everything that they can and just, you know, they sit on it or try to sell it and stuff like that. And, like, we're actual collectors of the cards as well too like i know that there's i'm not saying that everybody that's buying these isn't but i know a lot of people are just buying them to turn around and post them on craigslist or i imagine facebook marketplace or the percentage of people who are buying them to flip them is a very small percentage of the population of people who are trying to buy pokemon cards but they are the ones that are buying all of them at once yes you know that's why i'm you know i like stores I like the policy that my local store has, which, you know, limits per customer yeah. how many things you can get at any given time, which, you know, sucks because I want more sometimes, but also is great because I know that on any any given time they get stock on something, I have a pretty pretty good chance of getting something. 
Yeah, and I was talking about this with somebody in the kind of funny Facebook group, I think yesterday, basically, just about like, they were like, well, why don't you just go to your local card shop anyways, like the that's better anyways. And it's like my local card shop to get an elite trainer box, it's usually double the price. Like they're also charging astronomical prices. And it's I live in a rural area where like it's I think even for them, the markup, there's markup happening for them to buy it from their suppliers. So at the same time, they're like trying to make their money back. But like I went recently and there was a, a Shining Fates Elite Trainer box and it was 100 bucks and it's normally 50. And I won't I'm not going to pay that. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, there's making a profit and then they're scalping. <laughs> So until until my local card shops aren't doing that, I probably won't go there for stuff. There, some of them are pretty good about like pre-orders. Like they'll actually give them to you at cost for pre-orders. But when it comes to other stuff, they like they mark up really high, and it's a bummer because I would like to support my local shops, but at the same time, I would rather buy from Target online when the, if they still do it. So this is well, and as, again, as of right now, only, it sounds like it sounds like it's just in store that they're. It sounds like it's that. just in store. I have not heard whether or not it will also go online. Which, uh, maybe while that will that alleviate now. the physical confrontations that they're talking about, that won't do anything to prevent the scalping situation from going on. In fact, it makes it even easier with so many people making purchases with bots these days. Yeah. So I've had more luck with online than I have with in store but target has like honestly their online interface to like get the cards is a little bit better but best buy is like the worst <laughs> like they're honestly like they're gone in like seconds on best buy so well so that's it for the news that we have this week uh our as we said at the top of the show our main topic is dealing with the ethical dilemmas about what pokemon is it okay to catch or and what pokemon should you absolutely catch in order for the betterment of society? So uh, this is a pretty silly topic, obviously. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're just going to, you know, we, we said we're going to go with at least five each for ones that it is morally irresponsible to catch and ones that are five that are morally irresponsible not to catch from each of us. Uh, and we'll and see I'm, how how long this conversation's taking. We may add more. We may take some off, but we're going to do our best with that. I'm pulling up my phone because I typed it all out on my phone this like over the couple past couple days at work. So I'm pulling up my notepad now. But Jeff, as the host, if you would like to start, okay. So yeah, I'll go ahead and start with one that I think it is morally wrong to catch. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of them. In fact, I was telling Dustin when I was making my notes for this. I spent like, you know, an hour and a half just going through the original 150 and I already had like seven to talk about just from the original 150. And that was with me like looking at some and being like, you know what, I'm, this is this one's not outrageous enough. <laughs> Turns out Pokemon are really dangerous. And if you look at the Pokedex entries, like there's some that everybody knows about that are like outrageous Pokedex entries. But the number of Pokedex entries that like talk about the destructive power of these Pokemon and like it could destroy a truck or it could kill an Indian elephant, which I'd like to talk about. There's at least two Pokedex entries that refer to Indian elephants and like do Indian elephants exist in Pokemon? <laughs> Regardless, Pokedex yeah. is weird. <laughs> Does India exist in the Pokemon world? I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> think so, but yeah, me neither. <laughs> Learn something yeah. new every so day. point is Pokemon are really dangerous and and I just also love in the Pokedex, it's always like they're always talking about like they just discovered these Pokemon. Like yeah. the, like they have the most basic definitions for what these Pokemon are, and it's like rumor has it that blank. And it's like rumor? Like yeah. I've caught I've caught six hundred of this guy in my lifetime. I know exactly what, what's going on with this Pokemon. <laughs> but I digress. The first one I'm gonna talk about is from the original 150, and we're talking War Turtle. Okay? I'm saying that it is uh, morally wrong to catch War Turtles. And I base that off of what it says for the Pokedex entry for Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. It says, It is said to live 10,000 years. Its furry tail is popular as a symbol of longevity. Okay, so War Turtle's going to live for 10,000 years. How long is the Pokemon trainer that catches him going to live, Dustin? Definitely not 10,000 years. Not 10,000 years. So now you got this War Turtle stuck in a Pokeball. 
you know, unless you got someone to pass it on to, you know, it's probably just a generational thing, you know, like it's just passed down from generation to generation. Well, you would hope so, but you know, God forbid a guy dies and he, and he hasn't had a chance to pass his, his war turtle pokeball onto someone. And now war turtles just stuck for ever. (laughs) Counterpoint. If it evolves into blastoise, does it lose the ability to live that long? You know what? It doesn't say how long blastoise lives. So that, that is, uh, a real question here. If you can evolve it, it's fine. It, but you can't catch a war turtle and keep it as a war turtle. That is that is morally wrong. You're imprisoning this Pokemon for like even even if you live a hundred years, you you still got nine nine well nine thousand nine hundred years that this poor war turtle is gonna be without his yep. his master. It's just tragic. Yeah. I, I get it. That's, <laughs> I I was honestly I was like, why is he choosing War Turtle? But I get it now. That's and a good one. All some right. of them are going to be more obvious than others, but I thought I'd open it up with like the, out of left field. I mean, I'm going to start with the most obvious one of them all. I'm going to go with Arceus. Okay, very this good. Is literally, God in this universe, like it is so morally wrong to catch that. Like, what what message does that send as well? Too of like this is this holy deity, but it's just contained in this little ball that looks like this and it's just like it just seems so morally wrong to catch an Arceus um yeah that was like when you brought this topic up that was my immediate thought was like yeah first of all how could you even catch that Pokemon like you feel like it just seems like that Pokemon would be so powerful that you wouldn't even be able to catch it well you know you think maybe you have to use a master ball but even then like the, the concept of being able to capture God <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what? How do you just how do you catch God in a Pokeball and like keep it in there? And like, what happens? And so, worse, like you try to bring it out in battle, and now you're yeah. bringing a literal God into battle, and it's listening yeah. to you, listening to your first commands. of all. That's cheating. That's cheating, <laughs> and that should that's against regulation rules, in my opinion. <laughs> Two, um, like what happens if let's just assume in their universe that RCS like controls things or like has any effect on the way the universe works what happens if that pokemon's just stuck in a pokeball and can't like affect things like would it just like literally would hell take over earth and like just like all kinds of satanic stuff happen so the counterpoint just to play devil's advocate devil's advocate <laughs> uh it, most of the pokedex entries <laughs> for arceus say the legend tells or it is believed that and you know so like maybe it's just mythology and Arceus didn't actually create the world but like now even even if he's like even remotely responsible for world creation this seems like a a big misstep morally I mean in the (laughs) uh, the canonical film Pokemon Detective Pikachu Detective Pikachu does say, quote, sweet mother of Arceus instead of sweet mother of God, which would make you assume that Arceus is God. Yeah. I, uh, so it is morally wrong to catch Arceus. <laughs> or Arceus. Anyone... Did we, didn't, didn't they say Arceus? They did, the, but I disagree. In, yeah, I, I disagree too. <laughs> I think Pokemon Company is wrong on that one. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know if anyone has enough. ever played the uh, video game Nier uh, uh, Automata. But this whole conversation made me think we will catch Arceus and become yeah. as gods. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shout out for the, like the 10 people in the world that, you know. I got it. I got <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Well, so now I'm going to do one that I believe it is morally reprehensible to uh, to uh, not catch one of these. Uh, I, my list is very long. Let me, let me pick one of these. Okay. We'll go ahead and start with, I'm going to start with uh, Haunter and Gengar, okay? Okay. If you come across a Haunter or a Gengar, you have to catch this Pokemon. And again, I'm basing most of my stuff off their Pokedex entries. uh, Because for Haunter, it hides in the dark, planning to take the life of the next living thing that wanders close by. <clears throat> That's from Pokemon Crystal. Okay? So Haunter is literally waiting in the dark to murder people. So if you if you see one, you have to catch it, because if you don't, you are condemning the next person that walks by to death. Pokemon horror movie win. 
That's all I'm saying. Like, they could definitely do that. In fact, yeah. honestly, I, I might argue uh, that the third movie, a little, you know, could very easily have been transferred into a horror movie. Very, very. We'll did, talk about that when we get to that movie. Did you hit the? This is like light spoilers for Pokemon Snap, but did you hit the level where Gengar is? I have Pokemon not. Snap I've not seen Gengar yet. Okay. Okay. I won't say anything then. Um, yeah, I agree. That's creepy. I would definitely, I think that that's, if it literally kills people, you have, you're morally obligated to keep that in a Pokeball forever and never use it ever again. And it doesn't get any better when it evolves to Gengar, who, uh, the Pokedex entry says to steal the life of its target, again, going to murder yeah. someone, it yeah. slips into the prey's shadow and silently waits for an opportunity. I'm just saying, you know, like War Turtle, we solved that problem by evolving to Blastoise, but you can't solve this one by evolving to uh, to Gengar. So you got to nope. catch Haunter and put him in the box and never let him out. <laughs> yep. Just lock him up, throw away the key kind of thing. Except for I love Haunter and Gengar, so it does kind of suck. I know, right? <laughs> um, now, okay. you, could, you could make the argument, and I will allow the argument, that once you've captured him, you can use them still. Because as long as they're listening to your instructions, you can instruct that they not murder people. So there is a caveat there, but yeah. What you um, got? I got something in a similar vein of like just kind of murdering things. Um, just my first one is things. muck. Muck. Okay. Muck. Um, muck is a living biohazard, leaking toxins that instantly kill all plant life it touches. So like right there, it's just literally destroying the plant life around it and. We're already destroying our earth as it is. Like we don't need we don't need a Pokemon to do it. Like, just sit in a Pokeball and just think about all the all the trees you're killing. Like I mean that's a good point. Muck is a hazard, and they make that clear yeah. in every one of his Pokedex entries that muck yeah, and is it's basically extremely just hazardous. Like, it's like a poisonous sludge is all I think about when I see muck. So even like this was one of the ones when you were talking about that, this was one of the ones that was like a first one for me where I was like, muck is probably a problem. Like, but so it's interesting that you would say that for one that you have to catch to get them out of the world, uh, because the next one that I have for Pokemon that I think it is morally wrong to catch is Grimer. Ah, uh. now Grimer also toxic, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, obviously that that's an issue. But all the way back in Red and Blue, they made it clear that Grimers eat polluted sludge from factories and they also eat trash. So they are important to reducing pollution because they consume it. And so I'm thinking we, you, you know, let the Grimers hang out around toxic waste, let them clean that up, let them go to garbage dumps, eat all the trash in there. That's great. We're going to you know save the environment through Grimers. But the important thing now is to not let them evolve <laughs> because then they destroy all vegetation in the vicinity. <laughs> what do you think about that, Dustin? Yeah, I think it's good. It makes me think of like spiders, how like a lot of people are like terrified of spiders, but uh, spiders like kind of kill, they'll like, you know, if you have spiders around your house, they're going to eat the smaller insects and stuff like that, that like the flies and everything like that. And it's kind of just one of those things that keeps more insects away from your house. So I get it. It's like keeping more pollution out of the world. But it's weird then. So is it because it eats all that pollution, it becomes a monster? So we may have to stop Grimer. I, I, that's what we got to monitor the Grimers. I think, uh, you know, keep them from becoming full on mucks. And, uh, and that'll be good for the environment overall. Yeah, I think that's fair. So we just have to capture it once it becomes muck. Yes. Okay. Okay. Or, I mean, yeah. I suppose you could also argue, and a lot of the ones I have on the list on ones that you should not catch, uh, you could argue that you could catch them and then force them to do the good thing. But, mm -hmm. like, you know, it sounds like Grimers are doing that naturally. They're just hanging out outside sludge pipes, eating toxic waste. I think that's... Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it even in the Pokemon? I feel like in the Pokemon... One like of the first episodes, one, one of the episodes in the first season was Grimers yeah. eating toxic waste. <laughs> All right, I buy it. All right, so for me, the next one that I have um, that it's morally wrong to catch is I'm going to go with... I've got a few here. I'm going to go with Kyogre. Because On my Kyogre, list as well. 
yeah, Kyogre has the ability to expand oceans. So, like, I don't know. I feel like it's morally wrong to catch a Pokemon that literally is, like, part of, like, creating the oceans that we have around us and, like, populating the world with water. So, for me, it just seems like that's a real bad choice. And I'll just throw it in here because it's, like, in the same vein as Groudon. With, like, they're both the legendaries from that generation. Kyogre it can, like, expand the oceans and then uh, Groudon does the same thing where, it, like... But from land. land, like it can ex it can expand land and stuff like that. So those two for me kind of almost just go hand in hand together for two that would be morally wrong to catch because you're literally taking away the ability to create land and water on our earth. And that would be not a good idea, in my opinion. I mean, I agree. And also, like, in, in addition to creating you know, the, the oceans and all that. It also just controls water in general. Uh, so, you know, let him take well, care of the how, oceans. And that's literally the plot of those games is like the evil team is trying to use those Pokemon yep. for like evil and like flood the world slash like... Yeah. Team Aqua and Team Magma world. were... I mean, talk about a jump in how dangerous the evil scheme is from one yeah. game to the next. Yeah. <laughs> like, we go from the usual, like, Oh, we're, we just want to cap. We want to steal people's Pokemon and we want to like become rich. We go from that to, we want to capture this legendary Pokemon and use it to destroy the planet. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's let this 10 year old stop that. <laughs> but yes, so I agree. Kyogre, Groudon, uh, both were on my list as well for ones that, you should not catch. Okay, so now I have one that I believe it is important not to catch them. Or, uh, sorry, it's important... <laughs> if It's bad if you don't catch these. You know what I meant. Yep. Uh, so, let's go with... I'm going to go with Magnemite and Magneton. Uh, you may recall from their Pokedex entries as well as appearances in the anime that they feed on electricity from power lines, which causes power outages. Uh, in Alpha Sapphire, they even say that Magneton emits a powerful magnetic force that is fatal to electronics and precision instruments. Because of EMP. this, it is, it is said that some towns warn people to keep this Pokemon inside a Pokeball. It's right there in the game. Catch these Pokemon and lock them up. They are a danger to society. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. I agree. Um, if they're going to cause like rolling blackouts, I definitely don't think it's a Pokemon that should be out and about just like hanging out. Yeah, and they like they just do it naturally. Yeah, they're just not even trying. Yeah, they just they're, they're attracted to where the electricity is. So, you know, they're going to go to the power lines. They're going to go to the power plants and they're going to mess things up. You know, I just imagine, like, if you have Magnemites and Magnetons near a hospital, you know, I mean, this is just a huge tragedy waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah it's just like rolling by some, like, really important place and then it just loses power. So that's doesn't seem like a fun thing to have. So I agree. I think that's a I think that's a good call. All right. My next one that it is morally wrong not to catch. Let me scroll down here. Let's see. I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go. Uh, with Eternatus. OK. Am I getting it, am I getting yeah. it right? That, yeah, you got it. You got it that time. Um, so this is from Bulbapedia and it says when it is awake, Eternatus causes a phenomenon dubbed as the darkest day, which that doesn't sound great at all. In which, a ma in which the massive quantities of Dynamax energy is unleashed, causing Pokemon to Dynamax and rampage uncontrollably in their areas. So we saw that in um, spoilers for Pokemon uh, Journeys, but they have an episode where that happens and the Pokemon are like rampaging around and stuff like that uncontrollably because they're not like... <laughs> spoilers not for Pokemon oh. Sword and Shield as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It yeah. happens so in a, the game too. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's morally wrong to let that Pokemon be out and about just like causing mayhem when it's around. So that would be my next, my next one to catch. Like you have to catch is to avoid this happening. Well, like especially because the Dynamax Pokemon, especially like 
like you see in the anime when they Dynamax in places they're not supposed to, you know, yeah. Dynamax, it causes problems for everything. So now imagine you have a Pokemon that triggers that in other Pokemon. Yeah. Got to get that guy off the market. Yeah, you're you're essentially <laughs> just creating kaiju's like all over in like different cities by having that around, and it's can fly, so it can fly over and do that to different places. Like, so that's one Pokemon for me that is like, yeah, most of the legendaries, in my opinion, I like, I always feel like I'm like, yeah, it's probably wrong to catch this, but not Eternatus. I think it's like it's fifty fifty on whether or not it's a good I idea to catch true. it or not. Uh, because some of them, like we we're talking about, are responsible for creation. But then the other ones are just really dangerous Pokemon. <laughs> That's true. I guess I do have like two on my list that it's morally wrong not to catch. So uh, next, I'm going back to ones that it is morally wrong to catch. Um, so now, again, this is one I think that if used properly, you might be able to to it might still be okay for you to catch this Pokemon. But I think to be fair, it needs to be free, and that is Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh, uh, according to the Pokedex entries for Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, it possesses seven colored wings. It is said that those who see Ho-Oh are promised an eternal happiness. So if you catch Ho-Oh and no one else gets to see it again, you are you are making it so other people can't be happy. Or maybe they can be happy, but like if they even see Ho oh, it's guaranteed that they're gonna be happy. So you are you're taking away that 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 option from the rest of humanity. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense to me. I think that Ho oh does a lot of good, and it just seems like a bad like that's a bad Pokemon to catch. Yeah. So like I was saying, if, if you caught it and you just went around, like like went into town, like, hey, everybody line up for your guaranteed happiness, and then they all get to look at your ho-oh for a second, cool. But like, you know, now we're running into maybe this guy's going to catch it and use it for profit. Like, okay, you give me this much, you know, it, gold or whatever the currency is called in Pokemon. I always forget. Uh, you give me this much gold and I will let you look at ho-oh and then you'll be happy, you know? Yeah, or like, like some someone's going to like, use it for evil and like basically catch it and like hide it away to like take away happiness. Yeah. I mean, it's, people. it's profiteering is what I'm worried about. Is, is someone's going to catch that and use it for profit. It seems, seems unfair to the rest of humanity. That's fair. Um, my next one, I, I was looking at a little bit more in the Pokedex just now, even as well. One of the ones that I'm like on the fence about, I was just reading about it and I was like, Oh yeah, this kind of seems like a bad one to catch. But at the same time, there's like, yeah, you know what? I think it is a bad one to catch. I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, how do I even pronounce the name of this? Terrakion, or Terra, okay. Terrakion. Yep. Um, and it basically, the the biology here, according to Bulbapedia, uh, te uh, Terrakion fought humans alongside the other Sword of Justice, uh, which is, I'm assuming, the other three. Yeah, the other dogs. Uh, yeah. Uh, during the war uh, with humans. Are dogs? What are they? I think so. So this is why I'm on the fence, though, about whether or not it's, like, morally wrong to catch or not to catch, because it did, like, I guess it was fighting against four humans in order to protect Pokemon, so that would be a bad one to catch. But basically, it possesses phenomenal power, which can destroy castle walls with one blow. Should a, po a small Pokemon be bullied by anyone or anything, uh, Terrakion will crush them without mercy. So that's where I'm like, geez, that's a yeah. little dark. Can't leave him to his time, own devices. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it's like it helps humans like fighting in like battles and stuff like that. And it protects smaller Pokemon. So it's like, I feel like by taking this Pokemon, and we all know most legendaries, there's only one of them. So it's like you're kind of robbing other creatures from being protected by this larger, larger. Yes. I think it's actually technically a ovine. So that is one of those that it's, like it could be either or, like really, like in in the in the wrong hands, Terrakion could be devastating. So you don't want him to be be caught. But on the other hand, yeah. if you catch him, you know, that's a that's but a I tough saw, one. I saw this one and I was like, actually, I kind of like this one because it's a little morally gray on this one. Like yeah. it's a little in, it's a little in the middle. So I thought it would be a fun one to bring up as like one that I personally feel it's morally wrong to catch, but I can see the argument for like not cat or that you should catch it so that's my next one okay and i'm sorry so which one were you listing that for so that i i can i'm gonna go with morally wrong to catch 
Okay. So yeah, that was okay. Yeah. So that's what I had done as well. So this is yeah. next one is morally wrong not to catch. Uh, let's go with. I have so many options. Uh, Entei. Oh. Okay. It is morally wrong not to catch Entei because, according to the Pokedex entry from Gold, volcanoes erupt when it barks. Unable to restrain its extreme power, it races headlong across the land. Okay. So now some of the other entries say it is said, but if it is true at all that when Entei barks, volcanoes erupt somewhere in the world, then we are running the risk of some city being absolutely leveled or like some super volcano exploding and covering the world in ash all because Entei barked. That's an awfully big risk to take here, guys. I, I say you got to yeah. catch this guy and muzzle him. <laughs> I, um, I, I like that one. I, the next one that I have as well, too, is kind of a similar reason I chose it. So I do like the that option i love entei entei is one of my favorite pokemon I do too. one of my absolute so favorite legendaries <laughs> i wouldn't mind just catching entei anyways just to have entei so at the same time i'm like yeah just give me entei yeah but then uh, you run the risk you got to tell them you can't bark entei you can't bark buddy no barking <laughs> cannot be like my dog and anytime any loud noise goes off it just howls or just hanging out at the house with entei and the mailman comes by <laughs> and entei just goes off and levels hawaii yeah <laughs> Volcano that hasn't been active in years just went off. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to use that to segue into my next one, which I have as a Tornadus. And I have that as like one that you should, it's morally wrong not to catch because it basically just causes storms and like destroys things everywhere it goes. So I think it's like, in my opinion, that's a bad Pokemon to be out and about just kind of doing its thing. I'm going to click on it here. Uh, let me find Tornadus. It's not popping up. There we go. Tornadus. Let me pop it up here. I want to read what I had here. This ad keeps popping up. Um, can travel speeds of 200 miles per hour. Uh, it can also whip up storms with its tail. that able to blow away houses. So right there, it's like just destroying things. Anybody that lives in the Midwest, I'm sure, is like familiar with tornadoes and tornado warnings. Uh, Tornadoes is... Tornadus is feared and despised by people and farmers for for the destruction it causes with its ferocious gales when it's or uh, gales when unleashed. Where's the other one? Uh, it also gets violent when it crashes with thunderous when the two meet. So basically, both of those Pokemon probably shouldn't be out and about, but or at least one because if they can't yeah. meet, then you've eliminated exactly. half the problem there. And I don't know which is worse if it tornadoes are going to be worse or if thunderstorms because one creates a lot of fires, the other just wipes everything out. Yeah, well, and so I did have uh, thunderous on my list as well, uh, for Perfect. because the lightning bolts, like you said, create fires all over the place, and you know, and it says in the Pokedex it is therefore disliked, <laughs> which yeah. I think like, you had to put that. I, can you imagine a scientist like describing I don't know like a giraffe, and it was like it has a long neck, and that's why people don't like him. <laughs> people hate that giraffe's <laughs> neck, man. No, and this is I kind of looked at um. Zapdos for the same thing, but it didn't really have it. Like Zapdos to me didn't scream as much of like a this Pokemon really causes a whole lot of mayhem everywhere it goes. So yeah, especially why. in the Pokedex entries, they describe Zapdos as he travels in thunderstorms. Yeah, it's not so much about him like, creating yeah. them. Although we do see in the anime, it does kind of seem like he creates the thunderstorms. I think so too. But that's, that's what we're talking about. All these Pokedex entries act like it's all brand new technology that they're talking about here. Um, okay, so next one I have for one that you should not catch. Um, let's do... Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Suicune. So you have to catch Entei, but you 100% should not catch Suicune. And that is because Suicune travels across the world to purify polluted water. Yep. Done. Yeah. Don't yep. don't mess with that guy. <laughs> no, I... He's doing I... Arceus's work. <laughs> I 100% back that one. Like, yeah, you're literally just, like, cleaning water for people. And, like, you're basically making it so that maybe Muck can not be in a Pokemon. Yeah, like, maybe we can let Muck out for a little while, because at least Suicune's going to clean up after this guy. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, but I okay. do want to say uh, I am confused a little bit by the the second half of all of these Pokedex entries. They all say it travels across the world to purify polluted water or purify fouled water. 
And then it says it moves together with the north wind. So, like, does he only travel north? If there's east-west wind, Suicune doesn't go anywhere. It's just when the wind is blowing north, that's when he's allowed to move. (laughs) Seems very restrictive for a legendary Pokemon. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, I actually have my next one is very similar to that. Uh, Is it Raikou? (laughs) No, I went with Celebi. Celebi was on my list as well. I went with Celebi because Celebi is known, uh, a Pokemon known in legend is the voice of the forest. It is able to travel through time and exist simultaneously throughout time. The plant life flourishes whenever it's around. So again, it's very like, muck destroys plant life. Celebi like, brings plants back to life and like, keeps the plants from being destroyed and stuff like that. So I think... I think Celebi is a very necessary Pokemon, and it's funny because both Suicune and Celebi are in Pokemon Forever, which we'll eventually get to in yes. the review. And that's, you know, one of them is like purifying the water, the other one is like purifying the land, which also, in my opinion, that's an underrated movie, but we'll get to that eventually. And so, another good thing about Celebi and for why it shouldn't be captured is because it can travel through time. And that seems like a pretty dangerous power to put in the hands of literally exactly. anyone <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's definitely how you get super villains. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so uh, the next one I have for one that is irresponsible to catch. Or is irresponsible not to catch. Yeah. Uh, it's confusing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have alternated. Uh, this one was someone shouted it out in chat pretty early on. Uh, let's see, was it? I don't remember who it was. It was, I think, it, if it's who I was think, I think you're thinking of it was uh, Riley talking about Cubone. Oh no, it wasn't that. that. So th- this is oh. one. Uh, it was, it was Riley, but uh, Riley, Riley shouted out in the chat this one early on. Uh, this is a Pokemon that if you see it, you should catch it because you're. It's a danger to society, and that is Drifloon and Driftblim. Oh, okay. So these are ghost types, and not all ghost types are bad, but Drifloon. According to its Pokedex entries, uh, it says things like uh, it, it is whispered that any child who mistakes Drifloon for a balloon and holds on to it could wind up missing. Or it also says uh, in black and white, too, these Pokemon are called the signpost for wandering spirits. Children holding them sometimes vanish. And there's so, every generation has has a, one of these Pokedex entries. It talks about children holding Drifloons will sometimes vanish. Yeah, so that's terrifying. That's that's pretty messed up to begin with. Uh, but then add on top of that, when they evolved Drifblum, uh, in the Pokedex entry for Sun, Drifblum, there was once an incident in which a man took a trip riding a Drifblum only to go missing. So, like, I do think it's weird how many of these Pokedex entries are, like, basically, like, one-time anecdotes. <laughs> and that's, like... Every every person who ever this, looks up this Pokemon needs to know about this one time this happened. This is a horror movie, man. I'm telling you, Pokemon <laughs> is a horror movie. Um, yeah, that I didn't. I really don't spend a whole lot of time reading the Pokedex entries. Truth be told, when I catch a Pokemon, I'm always just so excited to try them out. There's a lot of creepy Pokedex entries. Oh, for sure. Here's another one on Drifblum. There's a rumor that if you catch a Drifblum floating on the wind at dusk, you'll be carried away to the afterlife. What? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you know okay so we have to catch all the drift 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 loons and drift blooms have to catch them but don't go out at dusk don't go looking for them at dusk you got to catch them at other times of the day otherwise you're gonna get carried away to the afterlife by drift bloom or you have to like surprise them somehow so that they don't see here's you what you do you take you. a child with you okay that's gonna attract the drift loons in because it's gonna want to make that child vanish and that's when you strike with your Pokemon. You sacrifice the child and then... <laughs> no, you, you get them before they get the child, Dustin. Before they get the child. <laughs> okay, but, like, you could just sacrifice the child and then you could catch the Pokemon. I mean, All yeah, right. so, like, you... Especially if it gets the child, you definitely need to catch it. Yeah, because if not, then you just wasted the child. Then you just wasted that child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're just as bad as the Drifloons. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I told you this would be a fun topic. <laughs> Um, all right, so my my next one that it's morally wrong not to catch, I'm gonna go with Weezing. Um, this another like poisonous Pokemon. Um, each of Weezing's heads contains a different toxin. It mixes its gases uh by inflating one head and deflating the other. 
when the gas its gases mix wheezing becomes more toxic and putrid so it's basically just like releasing smog and like poison toxins into the air i just kind of imagine it's like hanging out with a chain smoker all the time and or it's living like, in los angeles yeah exactly <laughs> So it's just like completely destroying you. Uh, part of the reason why I don't live in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. So I think that one's pretty obvious. Like you really don't want. Well, so yeah. remember, remember back when like the pandemic started and everybody was at home and like air quality was improving. That's a yeah. world without. Anything. <laughs> and dolphins started returning yeah. to Venice and stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's that's a world without wheezing. That's a good point, uh, especially with Galarian wheezing, who looks like Doug Demodome of the Dimsdale Demodome. So <laughs> definitely got to get rid of those. <laughs> oh my god, that's a good pull. <laughs> Hopefully, we have some Fairly Odd Parents fans here. Yeah. That was... <laughs> uh, okay, so I got to pick another one for. I mean, obviously, is this, this is the fifth one technically. I think is by it? the way. Okay, I think so. Well, well, we'll look at the time and uh, and reassess. Uh, here's a great one. And it's interesting just how many Pokemon are about uh, this particular problem that this Pokemon solves. But I think it is morally wrong to catch Dragonites. And ah. and I love Dragonite. I'm, you know... Dragonite's a perfect Pokemon. I absolutely love Drag Dragonite. I even love his derpy face, uh, you know, which is a, a big drawback for a lot of people. But... Dragonite, according to several of his Pokedex entries, uh, Dragonite is capable of circling the globe in just 16 hours. It is a kind-hearted Pokemon that leads lost and foundering ships in a storm to the safety yeah. of land. Yeah, I remember. I, this is one. This is a Pokedex entry that I actually remember. And in Diamond and Pearl, it says it is said to make its home somewhere in the sea. It guides crews of shipwrecks to shore. So this is a Pokemon that spends all its free time going around the world just checking to see if anybody got shipwrecked to, to, so that he can help them out. That's a good, that's a good Pokemon. And, you know, are you going to catch Dragonite and, and a lot, you know, let him out of his Pokeball every day to go save shipwrecks? I mean, you know. Yeah, and then, like, and then you're like, hey, Dragonite, like, I know that you have all these, like, really important things to do, but, like, Jim down the road wants to have a Pokemon battle. Like, I, I like, need to battle with this guy. And I know that you're saving lost souls at sea all day, but like, I really need you to come beat up this Pikachu for me real quick. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the reason the movie, the perfect storm happened is because Dragonite was like, not able was to not save able Mark to Wahlberg save him. And George, George Clooney's <laughs> in that movie, right? Yeah. George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yes. Dragonite would have saved them. And then we wouldn't have had that mediocre spoiler movie. for spoilers <laughs> for perfect storm, I guess. And then that come out in like 2002 or some nonsense. It came out in like 2000 or 2001. Something like that. So yeah, okay. don't, don't catch Dragonites. They're, they have good work to do just on their own. All right. So my next one, let's go with, I've got a few here that I haven't gone with. I'm going to go with a kind of a silly one, but it just, it seems morally wrong to me just on the principle. And that's basically it. So I'm going to throw in two here. Okay. Jinx and Mr. Mime, because they are so humanoid that to me, it seems wrong to catch them and put them in a pokeball. Now, granted, I'm not saying that it's okay to like cage animals or anything like that. But like, to me, it just seems so weird that, you're just keeping this like short woman in a Pokeball or this short mime. Like you're just robbing him of being able to work his life as a mime by keeping him in a Pokeball. And I actually had, I literally wrote, seems rude to lock a mime in an actual box. Yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so those I, are my two. And there's I, a lot of I, humanoid Pokemon. I thought of Machamp. I thought of Machoke, like all of that line. I thought of like other Pokemon, but these two to me just like, like Jinx just seems like a singer. So you're like, like you're just capturing a singer and then like a mime, you're just taking him out of work. But I guess like at the same time, a champ is like a boxer, but he like in the face kind of looks like a, a dinosaur duck. thing. I, I think he looks like, yeah, like, like, a, like a four armed duck. <laughs> he would, he could be a ducktails character. <laughs> so I'm with you on that. I, I mean, 
obviously, as Pokemon fans, we have all come to terms with the concept of catching creatures and forcing them to battle. So, yep. like, as Jackson alluded like- to on our last episode, there's some moral problems with Pokemon in its general premise. But beyond Unless that, you're the characters in Pokemon the first movie that for some reason think it's wrong to have them battle in that movie. But only in like that. It, you know, Pokemon aren't supposed to battle. Not like this. <laughs> exactly. Just when we tell them. That's when they're yep. supposed to battle. <laughs> when we're in charge. When we're in charge. <laughs> not when another Pokemon is telling them what to do. Right. No self-agency for, <laughs> for Pokemon. But yeah, I'm with you on that. Especially with Mr. Mime. Just because even the way he looks could very easily just be some guy. Yeah. It's just a dude in like a clown outfit almost. A lot, a lot, a lot of big issues with uh, yep. catching Mr. Rhymes. I agree with that. So, um, now I'm I have my last or quote unquote last for ones that you, uh, if you don't catch them, you are a bane to society. Uh, and I think I will go with, uh, let's go with Phantom and Trevenant. Oh god, I know exactly where you're going with this one. So, in Ultra Sun, Phantom, uh, by imitating the voice of a child, it causes people to get hopelessly lost deep in the forest. It's trying to make friends with them, is what is what the Pokedex entry says. Which I think is a bit, you know, like, uh, editorial. <laughs> oh, it's probably trying to make friends with them. It is causing them to get hopelessly lost in the woods uh, where they might die. But that's just Phantom. When Phantom evolves, Trevenant gets even more dangerous. Uh, Using its roots as a nervous system, it controls the trees in the forest, and it will trap people who harm the forest. So, like, God forbid you are a lumberjack, or you have... uh, You're a farmer, and you you have an orchard of of oranges or something like that, and uh, Trevenant perceives you picking oranges as an attack on the plants, because then Trevin is going to take over your orchard and beat you to death with it. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're problem Pokemon for sure. <laughs> like that's so creepy. I don't know. I Trevin is like such a weird Pokemon and like just so creepy. And it just looks like a, it just looks like if tree beard, like went mad. Yes. <laughs> like, 100%. If like, if uh, Sauron was able to like infect, the end like that's basically what trevenant would be and it's just super creepy speaking of lord yeah. of the rings if you haven't listened to our episode on casting so the lord good. of the rings movie with pokemon we had a lot a of fun with it. yeah uh but yeah the other one thing of our most fun episodes for sure this is up there too so is, far i'm enjoying the like... crap out of this <laughs> but yeah you know according to uh pokemon x trevenant controls the trees at will and will trap people who harm the forest so they can never leave so even if he doesn't kill them He's going to keep them there forever as punishment. And I just think that's particularly twisted. So yeah, Phantom, Trevenant, they are troublemakers. Catch them on sight. Get them under control. Okay. Well, let's see. My next one that you, it's morally wrong not to catch. So yeah, so that was five each. Uh, I've got a bunch more if you want to, if you I have, do it. I have one more. I, this is, this would be my last one because you started. Oh, okay. That's right. This would be my last, but we can like run through some more as well too. Um, Let's see. For my one that it's morally wrong not to catch, I'm going to go with Darkrai. Okay. Um, And I'm going with Darkrai because Darkrai basically can, like, create nightmares for people. And that just, it, like, screams, um, like, Freddy (laughs) Krueger-level, like, stuff. So, for me, Darkrai just seems like a Pokemon that, like, should not be out and about creating nightmares for children. And, like, it's already bad enough that we have Pokemon that want to kidnap children and, like, fly away with them. But, like, also just, like, making their sleep, like, for a living nightmare. Like, And it's not just kids. Everyone. Everyone gets nightmares from Dark Ride. Nobody nobody likes having nightmares. So, like, a Pokemon that just gives you nightmares all the time sounds awful. I literally, there's a whole genre of movies and video games that I will not watch or play because they give me nightmares. It's not because I don't like enjoy the games or think that they, they have, you know, good qualities. It's that that night I'm going to have a nightmare and it's not worth it. I'd like to sleep through the night. (laughs) Yeah. So 
Darkrai is known uh, to inhabit dreams and causes the target uh, to have un, uh, unending nightmares, which can be stopped if exposed to Lunar Wing by Cresselia. So Cresselia is probably a Pokemon that we shouldn't catch, um, just so we can protect ourselves against Darkrai. However, the unleashing of nightmares is actually a defense mechanism instead of an, an intentionally malicious act. So it basically, it's not like doing it on purpose, but it but can't still, help. It. Yeah, it can't help it. It's the same thing with Entei, like howling. Dogs are going to bark and howl. Uh, it's it's just it dogs happens. are gonna bark. Dark rides are gonna make you have horrific nightmares. An- <laughs> Another dog barks. Someone honks a horn. The mailman exists. It's gonna bark. <laughs> okay, I so, think that's a good pick. Yeah. Yep, Dark Cry, I think for me is one of the ones that like I don't like nightmares. Nobody likes having nightmares. So it just like I imagine they're bad too. If it just does like an, a never ending nightmare, it just seems like a horrible thing to me. That's yeah, that's mine. Okay. So I had this one. This one kind of goes along with the the humanoid things. This is one that uh, you definitely should not catch, and that is Gardevoir. Uh, Gardevoir has the ability uh, to read the future. If it senses impending danger to its trainer, this Pokemon is said to unleash its psychokinetic energy at full power. And not just that. In some of the other ones, it says that. Uh, like Diamond and Pearl, it will try to guard its trusted trainer with its life. It has the ability to see the future. And then in Platinum, it adds, it will expand all its psychic power to create a small black hole. Jeez. And so the reason you should not catch Gardevoirs is not because Gardevoirs are inherently dangerous. They seem fine. They seem to care very deeply. But what they seem to do when they're their most dangerous is when they are trying to defend their trainer. So if they don't have a trainer... Yeah, they can't get overprotective and create little black holes all over the universe. So I, I think it, the, the safest thing to do is to not catch Gardevoirs. And if you accidentally evolve your Pokemon to a Gardevoir, you gotta let them go. They can't have a yeah. trainer. They take it too seriously. And then just get they, a get a ga- uh, Gallade instead. Yeah, and, and and you know Gallade's not out there creating black holes. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I it mean, doesn't say in the Pokedex, Dustin. It doesn't say after it creates the black hole. It doesn't say that it can get rid of it. It just says it makes one. So now you got black holes. And you know what? Even the smallest I'm black, sure hole, black holes are, are bad. I'm no a black I'm hole not an astrophysicist. Would but... suck the whole world in in no time at all. <laughs> yeah. I uh that sounds bad. That sounds real bad. So I no definitely... trainers. Gardevoirs yeah. are fine Pokemon. Leave them leave them be. Allow them to Gardevoir, be self reliant. Gardevoir is such a good Pokemon that you shouldn't catch it. Exactly. It, it is too yeah. caring. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. I don't even think a Gardevoir is one that you shouldn't catch, but let's see. I'm going to go with... Got a few options here. I... I'm going to go with Rayquaza as one that you should not catch. You mean Rayquaza? And Rayquaza, <laughs> sorry. Ray. I'm going to go with Ray. No, this is one that we've we've gone back and forth on a bunch of times. I really don't like calling it Rayquaza, but apparently that's what it's Ray- supposed to be. Rayquaza. <laughs> sounds so... It just sounds like a... Like that's a name for somebody. And that's hey, someone's actual Quaza? name. Did you see Rayquaza <laughs> after work? We're going out for drinks. <laughs> Rayquaza, man. He's the life of the party. Um, I have here... Uh, and the reason why is because Rayquaza... Protects Earth, Earth from meteors and other Pokemon. Like we've seen it in different forms of the anime and like the shorts and stuff like that. They literally use Rayquaza to stop meteors coming for Earth. So it's like essentially like a protector of Earth. And I like the idea of there being a Pokemon that kind of just like is protecting us from. And that's like the whole like the battle between Rayquaza and Deoxys, which is yeah, Deoxys is technically like a virus from space. So that's that mutated good. apparently. So yeah. it's like yeah. if the coronavirus became a person, and then like was from space, and was from space. <laughs> Which I mean, we don't know. It's not from space yet, though. Well, Let that's me have true. I haven't ruled thing. that out. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see the CDC make that announcement yet. Rayquaza is basically <laughs> the Spider-Man trying to stop Venom. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, so. yeah, just a protector of Earth seems like a bad idea to catch it because like. Again, it can literally stop meteors. And, well, and it's so unobtrusive to humans because yeah. it's it's yeah. living so high up tower, in the atmosphere. Yeah, and it just hangs out in a tower, like the top of a tower, when it's not, and then it just like 
Yeah, yeah, so just leave space. it be. Leave it be. It's, yeah. it's doing good work. Really cool Pokemon, though. Definitely one of my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> Agreed. Don't touch it. So I, I was, since we're we don't have to alternate anymore, right? I can just say other ones no, I have. This is another one that I thought uh, you should not catch, and it is Shiftry. Okay, Shiftry okay. is not a Pokemon that I think about that often. Like in general, I think I, I'm not a huge fan of him overall in design. Old but man now, Shiftry. But now that I've read this Pokedex entry on Shiftry. I've, I've, my, I might change my tune here a little bit. Before you, before you even get into this, I want to say that I like Shiftry before whatever you're going to say. So okay. I just want people to know that you're I'm not going to be a bandwagon thing. Shiftry guy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Shiftry has a large fan that generates awesome gusts of wind at a speed close to 100 feet per second. The whipped up wind blows anything away. So, you're, right now I'm saying this is one that you should not catch. But Jeff, that sounds super dangerous. You can't have some Pokemon out there creating gusts of wind that can destroy buildings with a, a, a you know within a second. You're absolutely right. But here's the trick: the other the other part of this Pokedex entry says that the Pokemon chooses to live quietly in the forest. And another one, it says that uh, the, this Pokemon lives in a deep forest where people do not venture. This Pokemon knows how dangerous it is. Yep, it knows what it's capable of, and it it's... has isolated itself. So as to not be a problem. So I say, it's, leave them be. It's kind of like in uh, Avengers when they go and like basically take the Hulk out of like hiding. He's like, hey, man, I know that I'm like dangerous. So I'm like, I'm trying to avoid everybody. I'm trying to just be here and like do my and, thing. And what happens when they bring the Hulk in? He, he inevitably gets Hulk, transformed. Hulk smashes. That's Hulk what happens. smashes. And, that, and that's what's happened with Shifter. You bring Shifter into a town and he waves his fan. Boom. There goes the Pokemon Center. <laughs> yeah shiftry is a really cool pokemon uh but yeah that's that's very interesting that it like can just destroy things um seems weird that also the biology here mentions that the female have smaller leaves than the male i don't know if that affects the amount of the speed at which they can destroy things yeah maybe they have a slightly weaker gust maybe it's 28 meters instead of 30 <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any more or I, I can I yeah, can drop some more I've, on you? I've, you got some more? I've got some more. Um I so this one is like when I the more I think about it, I'm not sure. I guess I'd have to read more about like any of the other things, but Mole Trace is one that I think would be morally wrong to catch. And the reason I say that is because the entry here it says uh it sheds embers with every flap of the wing, so that is bad. Yeah. That's bad. Um creating a brilliant flash of flames uh, by dipping itself into magma of active volcanoes. Uh, this Pokemon can heal itself. It migrates to the south with the coming of spring and is said to bring an early springtime to cold lands. So that's where I'm like, it could theoretically be helping people that out that are like freezing cold and things like that and like bring spring with it as it flaps its wings. So Moltres would make places like Canada habitable. Yeah, exactly. You know? Jackson. You're welcome, Canada. Moltres is yeah. looking out for you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one where it's like, it is hard because it does technically drop magma places, but like, yeah, I mean, maybe it burns up in the air before it, and maybe it like I, it's, it's releasing embers. So if it's high, uh, high up, up enough, by the time those embers reach the ground, they've cooled. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that that's probably safe now. Yeah. It, you know, if it's actually dropping magma, well, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Because even if it cools before it hits the ground, it's now just a rock. And so now it's just um, a big rock falling from the sky. <laughs> this, it's totally, this is totally like not related to Pokemon whatsoever. But anytime I say the word magma, I can't help but think of Austin Powers. Austin Powers. This. <laughs> yeah. Hot magma. Yep. Every uh, time I say magma, I say that in my head. Here's another one that I think you should definitely not catch. And this is what I was saying earlier that not all ghosts are bad. Here's one of the good ones. Dusk Noir. His black and white and black and white two entries say it is said to take lost spirits into its pliant body and guide them home. So, you know what? He's, he's taking in all these poor lost souls that have been, you know, killed by drift, drift balloons and drift blooms and, or, you know, beaten to death by Trevenants and helping those, <laughs> Poor lost souls move on to the afterlife. 
destroyed by the atmosphere that Weezing creates. Yes. All these poor lost souls and Dusk Noir is out there guiding them to the afterlife. What a what a, a nice thing. He's he's like a guardian angel, you know? I mean he's a, a weird yeah. looking guardian angel, but you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So the next one that I have is uh uh Dialga and Dialga can warp uh, time by either speeding it up, slowing it down, or stopping it altogether. It can also travel through time to visit the past, present, and future. It is said that time started moving when Dialga was born and will continue flowing as long as Dialga's heart still beats. Literally right there. If you catch this Pokemon and something happens to it because of you, the world ends. Like, that's it. Time will stop flowing. Yeah, and let's throw Palkia in here as well. Yeah, I have I have Palkia literally the next one. Because on my Palkia list. controls space. So like, yep. you know, two things that no one should have the ability to do is manipulate yeah. time and space. <laughs> yeah, it's said to create alternate realities. So like if somebody catches that, they're going to be able to like create alternate universes and like that just doesn't seem like a good thing to have. That's definitely like I mean, there's a you whole know. you know flash storyline about how bad creating an ultra uni- universe can be. So <laughs> don't mess with Flashpoint, you know. Oh, Pokemon Flashpoint. <laughs> Pokemon Flashpoint, <laughs> and it's all because someone caught Palkia. <laughs> I, I think I don't, that might be all the ones that I have. Uh, I'll yeah. just throw in a couple other ones for yeah. ones that I think you should definitely catch. Uh, you should definitely catch Hypnos. Uh, cause one of the Pokedex entries says there was once an incident in which it took away a child that hypnotized. Now I know again, this is one that maybe this happened one time, but you combine that with you don't the, forget that one time, you don't, you don't forget that one time Pokemon who kidnap children, automatic red flag here on out. <laughs> so I, I actually have one left, um, for like Pokemon that you should catch. I have Thievil on my list. Um, when Thievil finds a potential target, it will secretly mark its scent on them. Thievil then uh, uses... Or this is one that you should catch. Um, Thievil... Oh, sorry, where did I have it? Thievil then uses its scent to track and stalk its targets by using... Uh, by using its little body, I think is what it's supposed to say. Little body and claws. Uh, Thievil steals the target's food and eggs. I think the word is uh, lithe. Lithe body. Oh, uses its... Li- I don't even know what that means. I'm going to have to Google that, I guess. Um... <laughs> Steals food and eggs from them when they least expect it. So, basically, this Pokemon is, like, it's just out there, like, causing mayhem and stealing things from people. And, like, it's just being a thief, like, its name states. So yeah. That's a Pokemon. I feel Catch like those. Be wow. we, we, I mean, we put we put human thieves in jail. Yep. Let's catch Pokemon. And this one even thieves. has a mask. Like, come on. It's like, yeah. Actually, we're, we're, we are pro-mask on this, uh, on this podcast. Yeah, sorry. Mask <laughs> here? Yes. Mask here? <laughs> that's, that's a bad guy. Uh, another one that I think that you absolutely should catch because it's too dangerous to to leave to its own devices is Gyarados. God, huh. the the, uh, the the Pokedex entries on Gyarados, Dustin, multiple entries reference that Gyarados is known to just destroy cities. I mean, I can see that it has like rage and like all those types of moves, rampage. It's kinda, you know, it's their you know it has hyper beam you know, it, you know and a lot of these moves when you think about them are like moves that last for like five turns and it can't control itself yeah so it just destroys uh cities and the sapphire pokedex entry says specifically once gyarados goes on rampage if it, it's ferociously violent blood doesn't calm until it has burned everything down there are records of this pokemon's rampages lasting a whole month yeah. What, 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 we're just letting these things go? <laughs> yeah. That's, that seems like a bad idea. And, and, you know, it, it puts Mag- Magikarp in a whole new light. You know, I was always so happy to evolve Magikarp into Gyarados. As, you know, as, as soon as I could get Magikarp into Gyarados, thank goodness, because Magikarp is absolutely worthless. I didn't realize yeah. just how much danger I was putting my trainer in by making him evolve Magikarp into Gyarados. <laughs> Okay, well, so that's that. That'll be enough for our you know, our moral discussion on which Pokemon you should or shouldn't catch. We add us as well too, though, if you have any that you think we missed or anything like that. And I, I definitely been... do have more on my list, but yeah, <laughs> uh, we threw in some bonus ones there. So, 
that's going to be it for the main topic. So let's dive into the uh, next portion of the show, which is our final segment. Rate that Pokemon. And actually, now I can't remember. Do we normally say rank that Pokemon? We do normally say rank My that bad. Pokemon. My bad. Rank yeah. that Pokemon. <laughs> the Pokemon that we are ranking this week is number 60, Poliwag. All right. So hang on. Before you go into Poliwag, let me give the rundown of the top 10. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Got excited. The top 10 currently is number 10, Delibird, with a three-star rating. Number 9, Hariyama with 3.5. 8, Duat with 3.5. 7, Ricky D, 3.5. 6, Shieldon, 3.5. 5, Rockruff with a 4. 4, Floatzel with a 4. 3, Galarian Zigzagoon with a 4. Number 2, Surfetched. And number 1, Squirtle with a 5-star rating. Flawless Pokemon Squirtle. <laughs> yep. I mean, we all... Spoilers, Poliwag's not going above Squirtle. No, of course but, not. <laughs> But, God, I love that line of Pokemon. Just, it's got to be something for me, maybe nostalgia, but I love the Poliwag line. I don't know why. I love Poliwrath. I love Politoed. I'm so, just a big fan. I am not a huge fan of Poliwag, but and I but I do like uh, Poliwhirl and Poliwrath and Politoed. And that's one of the cool things about Poliwag is the diverting evolutionary line man remember that when gold and silver came out and like it was like oh this there's another four uh, just I can so get cool. polito very cool uh but here's my issue with the design on polywag and if you're looking on on the uh the stream you can see what i'm talking about it's a little unclear to me like when you just see it in pictures what's the mouth and what's a nose and i know in the anime that the pink thing is the mouth. But I always wondered, was that a decision that some animator made and was like, okay, we're going to make that the mouth or was the big swirly thing supposed to be a mouth? I feel like the swirly thing is its stomach. And I feel like the little pink thing is its mouth. Like basing it on just like what tadpoles look like. Right. Like that's kind of where the mouths are. But, and I think that's part of it for me too, is that I think tadpoles are just super cute. So that's why I like I have an affinity for Poliwag. Okay, so um, I'm with you on that, but that does bring me to a point I have to make with Poliwhirl. So we agree that the pink thing was the mouth. Well, here's Poliwhirl. Where does mouth go? Uh, it turned into a nose. Yeah, I just don't think he has a mouth. So how does Poliwhirl eat? Do does like maybe the part like where the white is like right underneath the nose. Does that open up? Like, is the, cause there's like the circle that goes around its stomach, but like, does that little part open up a little bit? I'm just going mean, to scroll through here and see if there's some other pictures, you know, Maybe. I need answers. So, well, there's, huh, there's like a picture that shows its anatomy and it almost looks like there's the mouth underneath the nose, but I can't tell. Yeah. Let me go back up to that real quick. Maybe not. So, yeah, on this anatomy, it looks like there might be a little mouth there immediately underneath the nose, but that is not readily apparent on the actual image of Poliwhirl. Poly Whirl and it mouth. doesn't get better with Polyrath. <laughs> I'm Googling Poliwhirl mouth to see. Oh, there's like some like artwork that just like imagines what the mouth is, and it's awful. One of them shows it on the hand. <laughs> so... Uh, and then Politoed has a mouth. Very clearly, yep. Politoed has a mouth. So this is what we're, uh, we're dealing with. I so now now that I've now, now that I've put this problem in your head, does that change anything for you? No, I think it's like I still think it's right underneath the nose. Because even there's like a picture of like a Poliwhirl and a Polyrath in the water. And it shows the, like, Polyrath, like, it's a gif, sorry. But it, like, shows the Polyrath's, like, the circle isn't a circle anymore. It's, like, going like this at the top as if it almost looks like, like that's where the mouth is. I don't know. I don't know. But it's... Poliwag, you know, so 
I have I, I have issue with the rest of the evolution with the rest of the evolutionary line because like it of either the mouth. It either either the big swirly thing is the mouth well, on all of them, or well, it on. had a mouth and loses the mouth. There's literally uh, a gif of Polly Whirl shooting water right out of the middle of its like chest mouth thing. So that's that. why I think that's the mouth. And so then that means the pink thing, which we've seen in the in the animations, like moves and opens and closes. That means it's some sort of weird nostril. Why does it only have one nostril then? But it looks like it's a mouth. I don't know. Game Freak, if you're watching this, please give us answers. I was gonna say this one this one messed me up. Like even as a kid, I've always been the I was always the kid who overanalyzes things. So I was like, hey, hang on a second. Where where's the mouth on this thing? <laughs> And this has been bothering me for 20 years, at least. <laughs> yeah, there's like no indication of what the mouth is on Polyworld. Wow. So. You broke my brain. So, like, Polywag on his own. Cool design. I like Polywag. No doubt about that. But I have issues with the rest of the evolutionary line uh, with just, like, their actual design. Their abilities are cool. I think that it's cool that, like, you know, Polywag goes to Polly World, which is kind of just a, a rotund guy, but then he gets super buff as Polyrath, or becomes an actual frog in Polytoad. Uh, so, well, I guess technically becomes a toad, but you know whatever. Uh, I know what you meant. So, it's it's cool. I do like it, but for me, I I gotta think it, it's got to be like a three. Hmm. We have a lot of 3.5s. Yeah, we do. That's because we like Pokemon, Dustin. <laughs> Is 3.5 we want to like them. a thing on our scale? It hasn't been, because if we average my 3 with your 3.25, it's a it becomes an issue. So then I, th well, I think so we were doing, if it becomes, if you gave it a 3.5 and I gave it a 3, that's, then that's it rounded, where I was going. I think what that. we've done in the past was we rounded down to 3. I think, uh, I I just, think that's what we did. I don't know if, uh, oh, because the only one that I'm really like not sure of if I like it more or not is if I like Polywag more than Hariyama. Or if I'm fine with it being below Hariyama and above Delibird, or if I want it below Delibird, because then it knocks Delibird out of the top ten. So it is one of those things. Like for me, I always, always went water type. Either water or grass was always my my go to. If I went grass, there was a chance that I would you know, need another water type Pokemon. But because I so yeah. frequently went water type, especially in the early generations, I never needed Poliwag on my team. Well, and then there's. There's some better water Pokemon in general and the first generation, like even Gyarados, like talking about Gyarados earlier, For Gyarados sure. is a good option. Um, Lapras, like Lapras is, when we get to Lapras, I'll have, I have a lot of thoughts on Lapras, but. Um, so I, that's my thing is I, I, I rarely ever needed Poliwag for a team or that, that whole evolutionary line, rarely ever needed that. I did, however, use Hariyama on a team for a while because sometimes you need a fighting type. And I know that Poliwrath is also fighting type, but excuse me. Um, let's. I I'll. I'm fine with a three. Okay, so we agree it's a three. So now the question is: Is it above or below Deli Bird? I would put it above Deli Bird personally. Okay, I can agree with that. I think because Deli... I like I. <laughs> I think the evolutionary line, even though like we'll still review or rank those later, but I think the evolutionary line just puts it above that for yeah, me it evolves and it has a diverting evolutionary line which does make it which and i really like both poly wrath and poly uh poly toad so like for me it's so i agree with that it wins because of the evolutionary line and also because the thing that i like best about deli bird is also the thing i think is the weirdest about deli bird that it's bag tail <laughs> <laughs> that it carries presence in its tail like a bag we're learning things about Pokemon from this podcast that maybe people, maybe man wasn't meant to know these things. Yeah, like, why would they put this information in Pokedexes? <laughs> why would they do that? <laughs> okay, oh, so then that, that uh, we have to add that to the list. Oop, hang on. 
Number 10 is now Poliwag with a 3, 9 Hariyama, 8 Duat, 7 Rookie D, 6 Shieldon, 5 Rockruff, 4 Floatzel, 3 Galarian Zigzagoon, 2 Surfetched, and number 1 Squirtle, where he will it's, most likely remain for an incredibly long period of time. <laughs> it's crazy to me that in our top 10, only two of the Pokemon are Gen 1 Pokemon. Like, I mean, we haven't gotten a whole lot of them, but it's like... And then Poliwag's barely in there. So Poliwag probably, spoilers, won't last very long. Yeah, well, and I, I will say, uh, if you... We, we've, we've talked about this a little bit, about whether or not we should do more than one Pokemon a week w- yeah. when we're ranking these. So if you want to tweet at Podcat Monsters on Twitter, or you can tweet at me, at Good Game Grizz, or Dustin at, at D underscore Danger 10 on Twitter... Let us know what you think if we should be doing more than one Pokemon each week. That way we kind of move through them a little bit more. And we can each basically, we could theoretically, even if you wanted, we could each get one and not post it in the notes so the other person can't see what it is. And And so that we're surprised when, that's a good point. So let us know what you think, uh, people who are listening or watching. We'd love to hear from you. I mean, let us know what you think about the show altogether. That would be really cool of you. Uh, But yeah, so that's going to do it for this week. Uh, Dustin. What you got going on? What anything to promote? I am trying to wrap up Resident Evil Village. Uh, as it is eight thirty local time right now, I may actually go straight from opening cards tonight on this to go stream a little bit more of that. Um, over on my Twitch, D Danger Ten, I'm trying to hit affiliate. Um, I have some people that have been hanging out, which I very much appreciate. I'm basically at like an average of one viewer right now. It's I've been streaming at really random times, so I don't really have a ho- like a whole schedule. But after that, we did talk about in the pre-show about Mass Effect coming out. I'm debating if I want to stream through that or just kind of enjoy it at my own pace and just kind of play it because I absolutely adore that franchise. Um, other than that, I think the other only other thing I would like to promote as well, too, is the Twitter. Um, just follow us on there so you can keep up to date. And the YouTube channel. Check out, like we were talking about earlier, we have some pretty good episodes that don't have a whole lot of views. That Lord of the Rings episode I had a blast with. Um, probably our our most underrated episode we've done so far and we had so much fun on it so if you guys can check out that one we'd greatly appreciate it and i will Um, say with with our show i mean especially the people who watch it live you know or or watch it on youtube for that matter as well you probably have other friends that are big pokemon fans that's one thing that's always true of pokemon fans is they always have other friends who are pokemon fans so if you don't mind spreading the word about our show a little bit we would really appreciate that yeah and tell them you know to check us out you know they can follow us on twitter as well too or they can even give us ideas it's like if they're pokemon fans and they're like oh i have a cool idea for you guys like we we would love the feedback it gives us ideas for what to do on episodes which segue real quick before you get into what you're doing next week we are going to be reviewing pokemon the movie 2000 so make sure to watch that this week so we can we can do that we will be joined by ethan brannon so i'm very excited about that one me too ethan is a big fan of pokemon the movie 2000 we we both like we messaged each other and it was like immediately we're both like ethan's the guest right <laughs> yes <laughs> that was we, we both knew exactly who we wanted for this episode <laughs> so we're really looking forward to that uh as far as things that i've got going on as always i'd love for you to follow or subscribe on twitch you know here good game grizz on twitch but i'd also like you to follow on twitter at good game grizz i'm trying to get some more followers on there uh so that people will be notified when i'm going to be streaming things so that uh, I can get people in chat because that's what I love is having people to talk to while I'm playing games. I am going to be streaming the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, uh, hopefully starting tomorrow night. If not, it'll be Saturday that I will start Art, th- that stream. I have a question for you. What's that? Are you doing Paragon or Renegade? I'm playing Jeff. Okay. So whatever I think is the best decision to make in that moment that's, is what that's I'm how make. I played through on mine as well too. And I'll t- I'll, I'll give you a heads up. It's going to be mostly Paragon. <laughs> that's probably what I'll do. I'm always like maybe I'll be a bad guy, and then I'm like I can't. I always that. try. I keep trying to play games as as a bad guy, and I'm like oh no this no that's oh, I don't want to do that. And then I, you know if you're going to try to platinum it though, you probably have to. Right. So that's the thing is I'm going to end up having to do that this time. But so, but that's Mass Effect. Here on Podcast Monsters, we just want to thank you for watching and and listening and you know liking and subscribing and sharing and all that jazz. Uh, and we really hope that you will join us next week for our Pokemon the Movie 2000 review. 
And then coming up shortly thereafter, we're also having another episode where we're talking about the Pokemon TCG and uh, we're having our special guest, the owner of my local uh, cards card shop, uh, Brian McMeans, is going to be our guest. And he's he is going to talk about the original Pokemon craze, uh, which he was working in stores when that happened. And now he you know owns a store and we're going to talk about the current Pokemon craze, you know, uh, with the TCG. We- We've done a similar topic in the past, but we've never, we haven't done it with somebody who like worked through it. So I'm really excited to like hear stories. Of, like, yeah, so this is going to be like. the retail side. Yeah. You know, we all, we're always talking like on our episode with John. We the consumer side. Well, that side was a consumer side. And so it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to see the, the retail side of it. Uh, but so that's what's coming in the next few weeks on Pocket Monsters. Uh, right now, if you're watching live, we are going to open some cards. So stick with us. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're not watching live, uh, that's cool. Uh, but you missed out on the card opening. So maybe watch live, just throwing it yep. out there. <laughs> and then also watch the YouTube just so that you can watch it again. Yes. Watch just, you know, just keep watching anyways. Thank you all. And uh, we will see you next time.